My name is Arthur. I am CEO and co-founder at XQ Market. And we are building a DeFi platform with gamification elements on XRP Ledger. So as you might guess, XRP Ledger is our main focus. So we have a platform, and we are helping our community to navigate through the XRP Ledger, which might not be that easy task, if, especially if you're a new user or you are a new developer. Because when you engage in to a new ecosystem, it might look quite complex, and you do not know where to go, where to look for the data, where to look for the tools to trade, how to create a token, liquidity pool, anything. And let's basically start with the tools and services available on XRP Ledger. So since I'm from XP Market, obviously I will be a little bit biased, and I will walk through the XP Market itself. But as XRP Ledger grows, so does the ecosystem. When we started two years ago, there was very little to focus on XRP Ledger. There were no services where you could go and look what are the tokens there, how many of them, what's the trading volume. But now we have all of that, plus we already have different services who track additional parameters. And there is quite a lot of stuff to look at. So we have token aggregator and token rankings, and that is both for fungible and non-fungible tokens. This is where you can look at the trading volume, you can look at the market caps, at the interest. Basically, it should help you to drive your decisions on whether you're a retail user or you're a developer. If you're a developer, that will help you to understand in which market you're competing and who are your competitors. What's the size of the market? What's the turnover? And if you're a retail user, it will help you to drive your decisions on whether to buy a certain token or not. Whether you would like to look into it in the future or maybe it's out of your interest. Then we also have a DAP ranking. So for the DAP ranking, we are tracking the DAPs on XRP Ledger based on their source stack. And according to their transactions and total number of users, we are ranking them correspondingly in our platform. So when you go to DAP ranking, you can see which services are available and how they are performing. We also have historic data on XRP Ledger, which you can track. And historic data is also extremely important, both for the developers and for retail users. If you're a developer, you can see how blockchain performed in the past and tie it with your future expectations. If you're a retail user, exactly the same logic, but probably aligned for the trading strategies. And of course, you can track your portfolio through multiple of easy ways. Then DeFi. DeFi is obviously a hot topic right now, and we'll start on on it a little bit later, but with the addition of AMM, it became really interesting, and we can definitely see the interest. And DeFi is also growing, and we're already even starting to see emerging yield farming protocols. On XRP Ledger, yield farming is not a native feature, and you cannot build it on top of XRP Ledger as a native functionality. So you have to be creative, and we're already seeing these projects emerging. And finally, community building elements, such as launch pads and quests. And all these elements will help you, both as a developer and the community, to familiarize with new projects which are being emerged and understand the ledger, maybe by engaging through the quests. So DeFi opportunities. As I mentioned, and even David Schwartz mentioned today, so DeFi is getting really hot. And just before going to the stage, I checked, and the total value locked on XRP Ledger has reached $12 million which is an impressive amount, and six million of those is pure XRP. But DeFi is a little bit tricky, especially if you're a new user, and something that you should understand about it, how big it is and how interlinked. So this is a really unique feature of XRP Ledger that not everyone still understands or grasps how important it is. If you're a trader, you're probably initiating a transaction through one of two ways, either through the DEX, or through the AMM window. So DEX, something complicated with order books, AMM window, everyone is familiar, looks like Uniswap, for example. You have from to really simple. But as a user, you do not control where the transaction goes to. Based on the liquidity, your transaction might be executed either on the DEX or AMM. But what that means for you, for your user, is that you're always getting the best trade from this transaction. So whatever you trade, and your order, for example, is quite close to the current price, it might be triggered by the DEX and it will be executed. And it is important to keep in mind because as a DEX platform, 
we can see users sometimes struggling to understand why their limit order was executed. And it's all because it works with AMM. And this brings really beautiful synergy, beautiful synergy, as allows quite big liquidity with as little price impact as possible. So we have mentioned the AMM and how it works with the DEX. And when we talk about these things, it's really important to understand the features and limitations of the blockchain. What I have just described is definitely a feature, and it's quite a unique one. You will not meet it in other blockchains. But if you're building or learning about XRP Ledger, it's important for you to also understand the limitations. If you do not understand the limitations, you might start building a product and only then realize that you cannot build it because you're missing deep functionalities which are relying on smart contracts, and we don't have those. And that's totally fine. For many applications, you might, you might not even need smart contracts. Let's say you're launching a meme coin. Does meme coin need a smart contract? Definitely not. And XRP Ledger is absolutely perfect for that. Then, community building. It is also an interesting element for XRP Ledger because it will definitely not follow your standard approach that you can see on EVM blockchains. If you work with EVM blockchains, you can, track, you can, you can attract persons from Arbitrum to Optimism, from Optimism to Ethereum, and it all works around the clock. Because it's EVM, you use one single wallet, it's easy for them. If you work with XRPL community, you have to definitely understand who you're targeting to. Who is your target audience and where do they live? Is your target audience only XRPL users? Well, that simplifies the tasks. If your target audience is XRP holders, that's feasible, but now you will have to adjust your communication channels. We have more than 5 million holders of XRP, but definitely not all of them are engaging with XRP Ledger. And based on that, you might want to talk to specific influencers or target another communication channels. Monetization. So this all comes through the prism of XP market, which we condense through two and a half years. And monetization is also a hot topic for Apex this year because there are definitely a lot of talks about sustainability and how we can make projects sustainable. And when we're thinking about monetization, again, you have to understand what is the best approach for you. Are we going for Web 2 way or Web 3 way? So Web 2 way would be where you take fiat payments to unlock a payable, for example. Web 3 way is where you take a revenue share from the transaction. So whenever there is a DEX transaction, you take 0.2% fee, for example. Can you do that? You have to evaluate the possibilities of the blockchain, again, as I mentioned about the limitations. And I believe, that's my personal opinion, that probably Web 3 way monetization will be difficult and really hard to achieve. And what we are aiming for is Web 2.5. This is where you combine both of the two worlds, Web 2 and Web 3. So we are also talking a lot about the subtraction of the technology and making it invisible to the user. And with Web 2.5, this is exactly what's happening. Fundraising. Probably there are a lot of projects who are looking to fundraise. And fundraising might be challenging, and you also have to understand what you're selling. If you're selling a product specifically for XRP Ledger, you have to make a really, really clear statement to the VCs or whoever you're pitching. Because pitching channels might be very different. You might want to go to family and friends. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone been there. Everyone did that. You can go to the grants. If you go to the grants, you have to understand how to craft your pitch. Because people who are reviewing the grants, they're looking for specific achievements and KPIs. You have to understand those. If you're looking for VC funding, you have to be prepared for quite a lot of rejections, and that will be normal. Probably for 100 pitches, you will receive only one feedback, and that's already an achievement. So keep all those things in mind when you're building a project or engaging with a project, and that will definitely help your journey. Thank you very much for your time.